What is up, my YouTube people? Welcome to another episode of What the f Wrong with Angel's Bike. Today I'm going to put my pipes back on. I'm going to fill it up with oil. And then I am going to go take it out for a little rip. And come back and do the compression tests on it. I'm also probably going to take my spark plug I'll take my spark plugs out and clean them a little bit I think before I try to start it um because yeah they're black like my bike's running too rich and I just I'm thinking it's just like a jet issue because yeah, I don't know like I don't know what else would make a bike run rich other than your air filter being too small and my air filter before that I had on before it was way too small so that that definitely was a problem but this one is according to KNN's what KN uh their like calculations that they give you for figuring out what size of a uh, filter you need mine is the right size for my bike it's not too big uh, but it's not, and it's not too small. It's like just right. Before I brought my engine down to him, I had done, redone my head gaskets and my rocker box gaskets because my head gaskets was leaking. Um, but then I found out after that, like another lesson because I just don't know these things. I'm learning everything as I go or I would have done a compression test before <clears throat> I would have checked my pistons. I would have checked all that stuff when the bike was apart and I wouldn't have spent money on all those new gaskets. Just have them basically go, go to waste. But when I had my heads off um, and I was cleaning them, I was cleaning all the carbon and stuff out of them and I did have like WD-40 sitting in them overnight. So then at that time, like they weren't, the WD-40 hadn't like come through onto the other side, it hadn't leached through the valves. And then like fast forward to when I took my engine to this guy who did the who did the rebuild for me, I took the engine apart while I was there and he taught me to do like, um, to, to check the, the valves to make sure that the valve, they were, they were actually sealing in the valve guides prop properly and um the way that so he got me to do a pop test he said that that was basically he's never failed doing a pop test with valves it's never failed to to like just tell the true story of the of the how good the seal is and how good of a seal you have with your valves um right so i did it and they did they made a nice pop when you pulled them out um, so, right, all things just to consider. This is what I have for an ignition, too. I don't know. Um, I thought I'd probably mentioned it before. Ultima programmable ignition they've got, and it's for the, in the cone there. So, I don't know, in case anybody's wondering. Um, I think I need to play around with my timing, too, a little bit. So it's static time right now, but I feel like it could be slightly more advanced. Um, yeah, like, I don't have an ear for that stuff. If something sounds weird to you guys, then let me know what you think. And anyway, um, let's get this done. Let's get it done. He's on here. So my dad made these little tabs too to put on the exhaust here just so that my I don't have like to put like a bolt or a nut, I mean right on this like that slot, that slotted hole is so big, right? And you see those things messed up quite often from people having to torque nuts down onto them so tight so 
not too much red pad over. Okay, um, sorry. Rather than just tightening these right down into like thin air, see where the studs there and you got that big gap. That's these Evo gaskets are nice. I don't know if they make shovel head gaskets like this, but they didn't have them at Harley. They didn't have gaskets like this style for shovel heads at the Harley shop when I went there to pick gaskets up. But these Evo ones work good anyway. They give a nice seal. And instead of tightening that all right down as it is with just like that, this big gap there, I'm gonna put this, um, just a chunk of the old, I'm gonna put a chunk of the old gasket in the, around just to fill that space and help give a better torque on that. Alrighty. I, I really need to clean this shop up. That's what I need to do. Okay, um, so, got called into work yesterday. So, um, I had to come back today to finish what I was doing yesterday. Um, I just got my pipes on yesterday and ended up getting called into work. Um, oh, I'm gonna check, anyway, I'm gonna check all those jets because I know, one thing I know for sure, the bite's running too rich. Um, and I'm gonna decide where I need to go from there. And I'll also, I'll check my float level, even though I'm pretty, like, I know, like 99% sure the float level's fine. I don't know about the Thunder Jet thing. Like I had mine blocked off. I'm not sure if that's the best idea or not. Like I don't feel like I need a Thunder Jet. I'm not hot rodding and, and racing and all that. But I've heard that guys use their Thunder Jet just for the fact that then that way they can run a smaller main jet so your bike isn't sucking as much fuel when you're just riding like normal but if you want to crack on the throttle then it will give you that extra bit of fuel so i might just set my carburetor up like that um so if you guys have suggestions for jet sizes to use what an appropriate jet sizes should be for my intermediate and my main jets then and also, like, if, if I were or were not to use my Thunder Jet, or if you think using a Thunder Jet's a good idea or not, um, let me know your thoughts about that. Um, I just want to make this thing run just exactly how it should. Timing, I don't know. Like, that's a whole other issue thing. I've got it static timed right now. I know a lot of guys who only ever, who, who work on bikes, and that's all that they have ever done is static time them. Uh, yeah, so I've got my VOES grounded right now. Um, so I static timed it with the VOES hooked up. Like, I've got a switch here, so off and on. And on is grounded, off is not grounded, right? So, um, if I flick it on and it grounds, then it's going to just advance the timing a little bit. So I've been running it, I've been starting it with the timing advanced a little bit and it seems to start easier. Um, so now I'm wondering if I just need to advance my timing a little bit um, and just get rid of this VOES switch altogether and just permanently ground it. concern um, for now is obviously this oil leak um, I'm going to take it out and just try to do like do a little bit more of that higher RPMs and just like letting the bike slow down on its own just to kind of get those rings hopefully to seat properly because I think I've just been going pretty gentle on it and maybe not giving it enough RPMs. I don't know if that's going to be where the oil is coming from or not. I don't know how plausible of a theory that actually is. I'm not a mechanic, I just don't know. That's what I was told by the guy who built the engine, that that could be why I've got oil in my rear cylinder. Other than that, um, I'm just gonna try and get this thing started and see what it's looking like when I get back. 
All right, just uh, moved my bike around, uh, cleaned up a little bit and just moved the bike so I can actually get around it. Wanted to mention that I just have my carburetor right now just set to whatever s and is, just their basic setup is for the carburetor. Just like a guaranteed starting point basically. So I'm gonna have to mess around with that when the bike's hot and get it all fine tuned as it should be. I'm so paranoid about frying something. Hey all, thanks for watching my videos. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet and you like what you see or you like me or you like my bike, uh, please subscribe to my channel and like this video and leave me a comment. Uh, let me know what you like. Uh, I also do not want to forget to tighten up my drain plug because that would just be very horrible if I forgot to do that. Mine takes about three and a half quarts. We'll fill it up normally. Maybe four. Anyway, we'll see. Okay. Get my custom made pop bottle funnel. Seat back done up. Almost forgot that I wanted to take these out, show you guys, and um, just clean them a little bit so that hopefully it starts a little easier. That's my rear plug. Yeah, it's black. Okay, rear plug, and okay, this is my front plug. Both of them are black, like, bike is definitely running rich. So I'm gonna clean these off a little bit and put them back in, see if it helps with my starting. Okay, so I got these all cleaned off a bit with the wire rail, just being careful not to go too crazy and wreck the, the electrode in the center there. So this is the rear plug now. Um, if I could find my brush, I would scrub that out a little bit. I might actually be able to just use a... Yeah, so that's the rear might clean it a little more um, with the brush. And then this is the front here. Okay. All right, so that one came out the front. Put that back in there. Um, I put anti seeds on these the last time I had them out a couple days ago. <clears throat> so I'm not gonna put any in there right now because uh, I'm gonna just be taking them right back out again. Like they've got enough on there, in my opinion, right now. So bike hasn't run since since I put it on there last, so it should be good. I'm going to use a torque wrench and I do um, 15 foot pounds or 180 inch pounds. Uh, 175. I don't like, 
I see specs out there anywhere from 12 foot pounds to 18. So I just figure I'll just go somewhere in the middle. Uh, I believe 15 foot pounds is about 180 inch pounds. So I'll just go 175 and call it a day at that. So that is my front plug after just a short ride, like pretty short ride anyway. That's my front plug. Let's get my rear plug out. All right, rear plug looking a little oily. Let's do this compression test. I fast-forwarded this bit of the video, but I think it was about six good compression kicks to get up to this PSI. <laughs> That's like low, guys. I think I, I'm pretty sure I know that. That's what I got there. <sighs> All right, let's do the front cylinder now. Compression test. Gotta make sure this gauge is somewhere I can see it. Okay, throttle open. up to that was like hardly any bit any compression but it, it went up to about 40. Nothing. This one feels like a good one. Nope. Oh yeah, 80. 80 there. Same here, about six okay, good kicks. Okay, that's front cylinder. So, remember, like, I don't know if my technique is right or not. Like, I kind of feel like I just kind of screw up the compression kicks a little bit. If you guys can tell me whether or not that's correct or whether or whether you know whether that's actually something that I could be doing then you know, tell me please but is this like considering that I only have about I don't even have 200 miles on this engine like 150 maybe or on the with the pistons and the rings and all that so is that gonna is that normal compression or should it be showing higher than that clean funnel with a piece of hose on it just so that I can get past my threads in my uh, for my spark plug and um, also just to guarantee that I'm getting a yeah and that feels like it's at the bottom Getting this, I want to get this closest to like the highest point in the, in the, um, cylinder, just so that I know it's actually sealing all the way around. So let's do a couple capfuls of oil and see what happens there with that. Cause I don't think I need that much. Like, uh, boosted, you told me I need a. I bought a shot glass full, so um, I'm gonna just do a couple caps. I think that, sh I'm guessing that'll be enough. Tell me if I'm wrong. But um, I wouldn't imagine it needs too much oil to get a bit of a seal around the rings anyway. Okay, all right, let's 
Okay. This scares me. So that didn't do much. So far it's the same as what it was telling me before. Also wanted to ask how hot the engine should be when you're doing a compression test. I know people say to do it on a hot or warm engine. So does that mean like hot, hot as soon as you can get that gauge on it after you pull off the road or can it sit for 10, 15 minutes and still be good? Maybe it's a good sign that that didn't move much. But then again, I, I don't totally trust my technique. Well, I'm gonna do the front one. That's all I got on the front. I'm gonna take it out for that one little ride today, but I don't see an oily tailpipe, but maybe I need to ride it a little and more. And anybody who wants to learn anything, I'm gonna say it right now. Uh, I'm pinning the comments um, that I find to be the most informative. So boosted twin cams, I've pinned a few of his comments. And uh, yeah, go back and read them guys if you think that you want to learn something he's got a lot of knowledge so that's my the rear cylinder right side spark plug fly in my hair holy sh you fly you saw my rear rear spark plug right hand side front Right hand side spark plug. Remember, I just poured oil in there, so yes, it's oily. The left side one was dry when I took it out. Okay. Running rich. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm going too easy on my head. Maybe I'm just not riding it just enough. Like hard. Just a little hard enough. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna take see if I can see anything in these cylinders by shining a light. Just very faint vertical um, like lines. I tried to get a view of inside this exhaust port as best I could at the valve there, but not sure if it tells us anything other than, uh, yeah, there's oil getting up in there. 